You're in Edmonton? No, I'm in Calgary. We got uh, kind of locked in because of the stampede parade. That's a, truly our exciting time. It's a very Alberta thing. People seemed very excited yeah, about it. That's the entire identity of this town, apparently. Dressing up in, in cowboy gear. Uh, a couple of years ago, there was a girl who got famous because she had a three-way behind a dumpster just off the parade route. It's very exciting. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I should congratulate you on getting up to Canada before we finish building our wall. <laughs> yes. Um, well, I have told people I could not have asked for a better place to spend Fourth of July week than this lovely country. Um, you know, truly, and I, I mean that sincerely. I'm so glad I wasn't home with conflicting feelings. You did an interview with Forbes uh, before the tour, and you said that you actually cut a lot of the Trump stuff out from uh, from the set this tour. Well, it's not it's not that I cut it out. It's that I try to keep the show to an hour and 15 minutes, knowing that it's going to expand as I continue doing the shows. I, I tend to write a lot on stage. I riff within pieces. So knowing, uh, I, I when I was getting the show together uh, and getting material for it together, uh, by the time I was ready to go out, I had way too much material. And I don't like to do too much of any type of subject matter. So my recipe uh, is always roughly a third are dumb jokes, just jokey, joke, joke, jokes, whatever. You, you don't have to have any, uh, you know, political opinion to like them. And roughly a third are anecdotal stories, you know, just like I was at the supermarket and I saw this or whatever. And then roughly a third is political, current events, religion type stuff. And I had so much Trump stuff that I didn't, I just didn't want it to feel like 60% of the show was about that. In order to keep that you know, as I said, that kind of recipe of a, a third of this, a third of that, and a third of that. And knowing that the the act was expanding and everything was expanding with every show, but I still wanted to keep it, you know, hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes tops. I just had to drop some Trump bits. And, uh, and then there's some others that are just, and I address this in the show, but you can't do a bit about a thing that he said because... An hour later, everyone's forgotten that awful, dumb thing he said because it's been replaced by another awful, dumb thing. So so those I had to lose. The new season of Arrested Development is out. That's very exciting. How was making season Good. five with everybody being around compared to season four, which they, you know, they had all the reported like scheduling difficulties and it had to be shot the way that it was shot. Was five more fun to work on than four? Yes and no. Being with everybody was great and always is. That's a, a, a really amazing cast to get to work with. And we've all known each other for 15 years now. And it's just a, it's a pleasure. It's a treat to get back on that set. But it was a very difficult shoot for us because scripts were changing and, and, and it's difficult as an actor because you would not often not have context for what you were saying. And as much as I'm saying it here, like times multiply it by 20 times is how frustrating it was. It was really tough. It made what, you know, should have been a great, wonderful thing, just kind of trying at times. Do you think that uh, those complications, those frustrations would have any impact on coming back for a season six? Or is that not even something you guys are thinking about right now? That's not anything I'm thinking about, but I feel pretty confident in saying that I don't think people would go back or want to go back if uh, if it was if we knew it was going to be the same thing. Yeah, there were uh, uh, multiple reasons for that being the case, but that unfortunately was just just how it worked out this time. You know. Now I want to ask you one more thing, and then I'll let you flee the the Calgary Stampede Parade. But on top of all your stand up okay. and shows like Arrested Development, your stuff with Bob Odenkirk, uh, the thing I always remember is you were in almost every TV show in the 90s for at least an episode, or at least it feels like you were. So I wanted to know if there are any shows, uh, th those, those one-off cameo guest appearances you did that were super fun, and were there any that were like nightmares to work on where you were just like, I'm glad I'm not on this show all the time? I, not really. I would say that the shows that were the multi-camera shows, you know, the, the ones where it's shot live, it's taped live, the Just Shoot Me's and the Drew Carey shows, things things that I did like that are so embarrassingly easy to do, and there's no work. <laughs> As an actor, you go in, you read a script at 10 a.m., you just read it, and then they take notes and you go away, and then you don't come back to, like, Wednesday, 
and then you have like another reading when they fix the script, and then you kind of start putting it up on its feet for an hour or so on Wednesday, and then you have a full day, you know, twelve hour day on Thursday, and then you shoot the show on Friday, and you're not you don't even show up until like four o'clock. It's uh, embarrassing, and I always thought like you know, would that be worth it to do, or would I just go nuts? Right. But I don't have any any feelings of like that was amazing or that was terrible. Uh, they were all just sort of, you know. Paychecks? Well, I would say paychecks. I was establishing myself at that point, so right. I was happy to have the work, you know. But nothing that stood out as like a terrible experience or a wonderful experience, I guess. David Cross, thank you very much, man. Absolutely. My pleasure.